To limit the brutality of war, international humanitarian law sets limits on the use of different types of weapons. But as we can see, for example, in Russian methods of warfare, these prohibitions often are not respected. In this video, we'll show you what weapons are included in this list and are prohibited for usage. Let's go! Expanding Bullets Explosive bullets are officially banned in military affairs, but are widely used by big game hunters because of their powerful stopping effect. Such ammunition when it enters soft tissues sharply increases its diameter, causing severe damage to internal organs. The first bullets of this type appeared in the early 1890s and became known as Dum Dum after the name of the suburb of Calcutta, where the British arms factory was located. They were mild steel rifle cartridge bullets with a sawn-off jack on the nose. When hitting a target, the ammunition opened like a flower. In most cases, such injuries were fatal or resulted in lifelong disability. Expansive munitions were banned in 1899 at the first Hague Conference. Today, explosive bullets are not used by regular armies both for reasons of humanism and common sense. Such ammunition is extremely ineffective against a target protected by body armor. Nevertheless, cartridges with expansive bullets are actively used by law enforcement agencies in different countries. They do not ricochet, which is important when shooting in crowded places, and are guaranteed to knock the criminal off his feet, instantly neutralizing him. Napalm This terrible weapon became widely known during the Vietnam War. Napalm is essentially vicious gasoline and is very easy to make. A thickener is added to the fuel from a mixture of aluminum salts of organic acids, naphthenic, palmitic, and others. The resulting gel-like mixture is highly flammable, burns for a long time, and sticks to all surfaces, including vertical ones, and it is very, very difficult to put it out. The Americans in Vietnam burned entire villages and vast forests with napalm to deprive the enemy of shelters. The mixture was used in aircraft bombs, knapsacks, and mechanized flamethrowers, and incendiary cartridges. Napalm was banned only in 1980 when the UN Convention on the Prohibition or Restriction of Use of Certain Conventional Weapons and the Associated Protocol on the Prohibition or Restriction of the Use of Incendiary Weapons were adopted. Cluster Munitions This type of weapon was banned recently. In December 2008, in Dublin, 93 states signed the Convention on Cluster Munitions, which completely excluded their use in hostilities. However, the largest manufacturers and operators of cluster bombs and shells, China, Russia, the USA, India, Brazil, South Korea, Pakistan, and Israel, refused to participate in the agreement, citing the high effectiveness of such weapons. Nevertheless, these countries respect the restrictions placed on indiscriminate weapons, in particular the ban on their use in densely populated areas. Most often in conflicts, Aviation bomb cassettes are used. They are thin-walled air bombs packed with small submunitions weighing up to 10 kilograms. In one cassette, there can be up to 100 such bombs, anti-personnel, anti-tank, incendiary, and others. After the plane drops the ammunition, the body of the aerial bomb collapses at a certain height, and dozens of combat elements cover a huge area in deadly rain. Such weapons are very effective against dispersed targets. The main drawback of the first cluster bombs was that their submunition did not always work in contact with the ground. White Phosphorus Ammunition containing white phosphorus is formally banned by the 1977 Additional Protocols to the Geneva Convention for the Protection of Victims of War. German and British troops used this weapon during the First World War. The Luftwaffe actively used white phosphorus in World War II, the Americans in Korea, Israel in Lebanon, and so on. White phosphorus belongs to the group of self-igniting incendiary substances that burn using oxygen. It is extremely difficult to put out, especially when there is not a lot of water on hand. Anti-Personnel Mines Land-based anti-personnel mines are in the arsenals of all countries with their own armed forces. Numerous varieties of these weapons have been massively used since the beginning of the 20th century in all wars and armed conflicts, without exception to disable the enemy workforce. An anti-personnel mine, especially a pressure mine, often doesn't kill but severely maims a soldier. In addition, not always all minefields can be found and neutralized after the end of the war. It is not known how many more of these deadly bookmarks are waiting on the earth in the wings, but according to many experts, their number throughout the earth could be several million. A complete ban on the production, use, and stockpiling of anti-personnel mines was spelled out in the 1997 Ottawa Convention. Still, most countries, including the United States, Russia and China have not signed it. Moreover, 
This weapon is a favorite means of terror for numerous extremist organizations and partisan movements, which of course do not participate in any international treaties. Ammunition with depleted uranium The armies of the North Atlantic Alliance countries used ammunition with depleted uranium in the period of the 1990s to 2000s. Scientists suggest that this is precisely the reason for the increase in cancer incidents among NATO military personnel and residents of those regions where such ammunition was used to strike. Experts have repeatedly argued that depleted uranium is radioactive and therefore causes serious health problems. During the NATO war against Yugoslavia, Tomahawk missiles were actively used. The war had contained approximately 3 kilograms of uranium, which upon explosion, turned into a cloud of small particles that spread across tens of meters from the explosion site. During the Gulf War, the US Army also used such depleted uranium ammunition. Up to a million shells of 30 millimeter caliber and almost 15,000 shells from tank guns were fired. Nuclear Cruise Missiles Long-range cruise missiles with nuclear warheads are highly accurate and capable of hitting most targets within the United States and the CIS when launched outside their borders. Neither the US nor the CIS has airspace monitoring systems capable of providing reliable warning of cruise missiles. Therefore, it is possible that a small-scale attack by cruise missiles will go completely unnoticed until the nuclear weapons reach their targets. Such an attack could completely destroy the other side's strategic bombers while still in airfields and severely damage its strategic command and control system, possibly jeopardizing the ability to launch strategic missile forces on alert. This capability makes long-range nuclear cruise missiles potentially one of the most destabilizing weapons of all types of atomic weapons. Multiple Re-Entry Vehicle Missiles These are guided missiles for destroying air and ground targets, equipped with multiple re-entry vehicles with four guided warheads attacking the selected target from different sides. One warhead attacks the target directly heading towards it, and the other three scatter to the sides at an angle of 120 degrees, after which they also aim at the selected target. In total, the destructive power of four warheads of one MIRV missile is equal to one standard missile. At the same time, the pointing accuracy of each warhead is mediocre, and it is unlikely that it will be possible to hit a maneuvering aircraft with all four warheads. When firing these missiles at ground targets, their effectiveness is also low. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel and leave comments. See you soon.